Okay, this is the other side of the motorhome. Probably one of the more important sides because we're gonna get to all of our other goodies. Just like the other side, there's a little hot thing right here. Just don't touch it for the other heater. But right here is our generator. Open it up, underneath you find a nice 5500 generator. It's a great generator, it doesn't give me any problems. Just put your fingers on the top, yes it's dirty. Pull off, lift up, and you have access to this. If for some reason, let's say the weather's very, very cold, or whatever the case may be, I usually leave these switches on, your breakers on, but if it's very cold, a lot of times you'll find it won't start because it's trying to keep all that power. So you'll have to come out here and do what's called priming it. So all that means is you hold down the button until the red light flashes, like so. Push it down, boom, it primes. You want these off, so that way when the generator comes on, now all I do is, I'm gonna switch right here so you can see this, because you don't wanna be in front of the exhaust. Just hold it down. Check the oil on this. If you had to check the oil, um, I recommend it. If you're going to be dry camping, especially, it'll burn a little bit of oil. Your, your oil check is right there. Please check it. Um, after like five minutes that it's been warmed up, then I would say it's okay to kick your breakers back on in cold weather or, or whatever the case may be. The generator runs off of the house gas, so it runs off of the same gas that your RV runs off of, no different. But it will not run if your gas is at a quarter of a tank or lower. There's a sensor in there that will allow you to not go bone dry. Um, and one other thing it runs off of the batteries, the house batteries, so please make sure that those are charged, that you're not running the heater in the night without the generator or whatever the case may be, because that slow charge will cause the batteries to go below 11 and a half volts and then this will not run at below 11 and a half volts. Next bay, then probably one of the most important bays that everybody always has questions on. Come on over here. Right here is your power cable, your power, okay? If you're wondering why the duct tape around it, that's because people drop these all the time and they break all the time, so please quit dropping them, okay? Anyways, right down here, this just lifts up, your cable goes, feeds right down here to the bottom, and you plug it in. This is a 30 amp plug, okay? Uh, most parks you go to will have a 30 amp. Now, there is an adapter I have right here, like I was saying on the other side about that extension cord, this plugs into your 30 amp, and then you can plug into a regular house outlet or the extension cord. Or if you're at a park that does not have 30 amp, you just use this adapter, okay? Comes right here. I usually keep it stuck right here so that way it doesn't get lost or whatever. Ignore all these valves. They do nothing, nothing that will pertain to you at any point in time. Okay, the other thing, there's a water pump switch outside. If you have to wash your hands or whatever, there's a nice little switch right here. Your water pump is right there. Okay, turn it on. The light will come on. Let the pump warm up, prime, and then just boom, and you've got yourself water. This water comes from your fresh water tank. The only reason why you would use your water pump is if you're not hooked up to what we call city water or land water or whatever the case, shore water, whatever. That's the only reason why you need this. Now, speaking of which, the hose right here, I showed to the extensors on the other side, but this is the hose that you want to use. They're nickel plated so that way you can drink out of it, which I still say buy bottled water. I don't trust the water that I get out of the ground. Once you plug this in, you don't need your pump on because now you're running directly to the tank. This automatically bypasses the freshwater tank, so no questions asked. But the only reason why you need the water pump is if you're not hooked up to city water. And I'll explain more of that inside as well. Now, the last and final feature. As I show you this last thing, in this bay right over here is where your sewage hose is located, right here. Okay? I usually use rubber gloves for this, hence the rubber gloves that are always lying around. I keep it in its own bay 
so it doesn't get dirty and contaminate anything. Over here, you'll see these two PVC pipes to add your gray and your black water. These are what everyone always has questions on. Right below that is the sewage cover. Okay, right here, this is the screw lid, okay? It just screws off. And this, always make sure these are closed, push in to close them. This just unlatches like so. You run your sewage hose right up underneath. And now even when, and then it, it twist locks on as well. Make sure you're all lined up, twist lock on, boom, you're good to go. Please, always make sure it's locked. Now, you don't want these open until you're ready to drain. The left side, the small pipe, is your gray water. That is water that comes from your shower, dishes, washing dishes, hands, things like that. Your fat, big black one is the black water tank, which is sewage. I don't need to say any more about that. When you go to dump these, you're gonna always wanna keep an eye on the gray water because that one will fill up quicker. It is a 60 gallon tank, but you'll be surprised how quickly you'll go through 60 gallons. This is a 40 gallon tank. The levels are inside, I'll show you that later. You take, when you go to dump this, obviously plug it into your sewage, however you do it, you're gonna wanna pull your black first. Okay, I'm not gonna pull it right now to demonstrate because I don't know what's in there. I'm gonna pull the black first. I'm gonna let it run, 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 run until I don't hear anymore. I close it, then I use the gray to flush the black. Hopefully that makes sense. Let it run, run, and then finish out. Now let's say you had to dump the gray ahead of the black because you want the black to decompose and take its time. Let's say you had to dump the gray. When you dump the gray, or when you go to dump the black, again, make sure there's some gray water in there. So if you just have to leave a faucet on, just let it run, fill up a quarter of the tank, I don't care. Just make sure there's some gray water in there so you can flush out the black, okay? So that should sum up this area. And again, when I'm done, I make sure these are closed. Twist this, unlock it, pull it down. Put it right back in its own bay, okay? take my handy dandy, well, I'm not gonna take them off yet, but you get the idea, screw the lid back on, and this is good to go. Okay, the rest of the side is very easy. You have three bays for storage. There's plenty of storage over here. Just be careful how much weight you put in here, since this is where the main slide comes out. Right above these bays, you'll notice there's a smaller awning for the slide windows. You use the pole like the other side, just like the other awning. This one is much easier. Just hook and pull the black strap and voila, it comes down. When you're putting it back, use your hand to release pressure, twist it, and keep the rod in the strap as it winds itself back up, just like so. Other than that, there is one last thing I'd like to point out. The driver's side door, I would like to encourage you not to use it because people that treat this like a truck door, and it's not made for that. It's not made to pull on or hang on, any of those things. So please, I would rather you not use it, just use the side door. I know it's inconvenient, but I would hate again to give you a bill because I have to fix this door. This should cover this whole side, and that will wrap up the outside of our tour.